you wrote about John in your book and you talked about that relationship being emotionally manipulative. He broke up with me, our third breakup or something. I drank before I went on stage. You're either a cheater or you break up. And I'm not the first, I'm the second one. John Mayer is one of the nastiest men in entertainment. He's known for getting with big celebrities like Miley Cyrus or Katy Perry and then trashing them in the media. At one point, he said hooking up with Jessica Simpson was like sex with a warfare chemical. He's also called Jennifer Aniston old and Taylor Swift cheap. So let's get into it. As you all know, I've been really open about my struggles with acne. Ever since moving to the West Coast, my skin hasn't been able to cope. But then I was introduced to Aster Rain. This is a small family-owned brand that operates in small batch formulas. That's important because you receive the freshest and most effective product every time. I start off my routine with my microbiome face cleanser. This product is excellent for removing dirt or makeup. As you can see, the product is super sudsy on my face and now I'm ready for my serum. This product is designed to help with dark spots caused by acne and sun exposure. I love the feeling of this product and the fact that it tackles anti-aging, wrinkles, and fine lines. Last but not least, the Aster Rain Rejuvenating Cream is the best. This moisturizer is infused with vitamin C, ceramides, vitamin B3, peptides, and cocoa butter. So you can also use this product as an under eye cream. Check out Aster Rain by using my link below and save 15% by using code Sloan 15. Thank you, Aster Rain, for sponsoring this video and for all the charity work you do. This year, they are giving 10% to Remember New, an organization that protects young girls from sex trafficking. So good work there. Check out the brand below and enjoy this video. We're going to be talking about one of Hollywood's biggest players, John Mayer. When it comes to John, there's a lot of history here. I mean, he's known as the world's worst celebrity ex, which seems like a difficult title to earn because so many of these celebrities are awful people. It's the most normal thing in the world. There's no, there's no lying, there's no cheating, there's no nothing. And you know, if you guys are going to run stuff and run every lie under the sun, John Mayer has been through a lot of women. He has been labeled as a serial dater and has had his share of public flings. Many of John's relationships have come and gone under much public scrutiny. Relationships with celebrities like Jessica Simpson, Katy Perry, and Taylor Swift have solidified his reputation as a womanizer. And there are tons of articles online which expose what it's like to date John Mayer, and it sounds rather stressful. So allegedly, John Mayer has a bunch of rules that his partner must follow within their relationship. One of those rules is that there needs to be intimacy, which totally makes sense to me. But the problem here is that John exploits their intimacy. Who can forget the time that John told Playboy magazine that sex with Jessica Simpson was like napalm? This revelation is what ended the on and off again relationship between the two. For instance, how does he describe sex with the starlet? Here's a hint. In an explosive kiss-and-tell interview with Playboy just released today, Mayer dishes about his sex life with Simpson when they dated in 2006. He says, quote, Sexually, it was crazy. That's all I'll say. It was like napalm. Sexual napalm. Sexual napalm? If somebody described me in that way, I would think, Oh my God, did I blow something up? I feel like it would cause pain. So I didn't know what napalm was and I had to do a little bit of research. So it seems like it's some type of chemical that is used in bombs or warfare. It can cause severe disfigurement. So um, John Mayer said that hooking up with Jessica Simpson was 
like this, which really doesn't sound good. And it probably doesn't feel good having your boyfriend or your ex-boyfriend go to the media and tell them that you're crazy in bed. So let's talk about how John did Jessica Simpson dirty, because after she left her relationship from Nick Lachey, she started dating John Mayer. They dated from the years 2006 through 2007, and John said that dating Jessica was like a drug. John said, quote, and drugs aren't good for you if you do lots of them. Yeah, that girl is like crack cocaine to me. Sexually, it was crazy. That's all I'll say. It was like napalm. Sexual napalm. Do you ever say, I want to quit my life and just effing snort you? If you charged me $10,000 to F you, I would start selling all my stuff just to keep effing you. John definitely has a way with words, and that's something I learned as doing research for this video. That girl for me is a drug, and drugs aren't good for you if you do lots of them. Yeah, that girl is like crack cocaine to me. Your body's like crack cocaine. Comedian Jody Miller tells Showbiz Tonight, Jessica Simpson has every right to be insulted by Mayer's comments. If I was Jessica Simpson, I would be so pissed off because it's not only incredibly disrespectful, but very violating. And it's not like he just publicly spoke badly about her. He also dumped her nine times through email. Back in 2020, Jessica Simpson released a book where she shared details about her relationship with a bunch of different celebrities, including John Mayer. And she described their relationship as toxic. Pops a guy named John Mayer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he might be the one that won't like to read this book very much. <laughs> No, no. Um, I, th there's stories in here that John knows. I, he might be shocked that I reveal. There's no doubt that John Mayer was shocked. And honestly, this book wasn't great for his reputation because she went out on public television and told the world that he's so manipulative. You wrote about John in your book and you talked about that relationship being emotionally manipulative uh, mm -hmm. and dysfunctional. Those are the words that you put on paper. Yeah. Is there any more that he needs to do publicly in apologizing? Um, you can't take it back, you know, um, and I'm a very forgiving person, but I'm also honest. And that was a time in my life where I was very manipulated and very also like in love or seemingly Jessica said that she always knew when John was going to break up with her. At one point, she believed that they would spend the rest of their lives together. But after the ninth time of being dumped through email, she decided to get a grip and move on for good. Jessica was quoted saying he had dumped me, then come back saying that he had discovered that he loved me after all. I always saw it as him taking me in from the cold. Every time John returned, I thought it was a continuation of a love story. While my friends saw it as a guy coming back for sex with some foolish girl. I believe Jessica because it does seem like John was in control within their relationship and he definitely played with her emotions. I mean, there were some points where she had really big gigs and she failed at those gigs because John had broken up with her. She was super emotional. She was getting drunk and then she's on stage in front of everyone and just she messes up and just walks right off. And he broke up with me our third breakup or something um it was right before i was going to do this huge thing it was 2006 and jessica was set to perform nine to five to honor her idol dolly parton in the audience president bush and a room full of dignitaries i drank before i went on stage that is not john's fault i'm the one that drank I stopped and i froze and then i just said i was sorry and that Dolly deserved better. Jessica left the stage and never finished the song, revisiting that night. And one photo in particular is still hard for her. It must be hard for Jessica to look back on those special moments and realize how John screwed her. And when they were breaking up, he was so disrespectful to the media. At one point, he was asked, about how many women he had slept with since breaking up with Jessica. He was quoted, I'm gonna say four or five, no more. But even if I said 12, that's a reasonable number. So is 15. Here's the thing, I get less ass. 
now than I did when I was a in a local band mm. because now I don't like jumping through hoops. Taking a step back, I think it's weird that these reporters are asking these questions, but at the same time, he's so open with it that it's almost normalized to talk about how many people John is hooked up with or intimate details about his relationships. And one relationship he had that I had no idea even happened was with Vanessa Carlton. If you guys don't know who Vanessa is, she is a singer and she sings the song, the, the thousand miles song like i would walk a thousand miles pass me by that one so that song a thousand miles came out in 2001 and she started dating john back in 2002 their breakup was allegedly spurred by john's career kicking off a lot faster than vanessa's she publicly branded him a bad breaker upper we don't know exactly how he broke up with vanessa but um it must have been bad and seeing what he did to jessica i mean i i would believe it Speaking of his breakup with Jessica Simpson, this is what he told the media. They asked him about what's next for John. You know, he's done with Jessica Simpson. What's going to happen now? And he said, quote, from now on, I'm just going to pretend that people really dig the crap out of me. I've been trying to prove to people I'm not a douchebag by not dating, by keeping my name out of Us Weekly. That's effed up, man. I'm not dating. I'm not even effing. So I'm going to experiment with F.U. In 2010, my goal is to get more mentions in Us Weekly than ever. So it almost seems like he's like trolling them and kind of like getting off to it. One problematic relationship he has had was with Taylor Swift when she was really young. One of John's rules is that he can talk about his relationships with his partners, but they can't talk about him or he gets mad and will badmouth you to the public. John and Taylor dated back in 2009 when she was just 19 years old and John was 32. When the relationship ended, Taylor wrote the song Dear John about her experience with him. Taylor Swift is an anomaly and they only make a few Taylor Swifts every decade. And I wrote this song that sort of struck me as like this Tom Petty, California, Sunny Rock song. I was thinking if this really is a Tom Petty song in my mind, who is the Stevie Nicks to that imaginary Tom Petty? And I was like, I wonder if Taylor Swift would ever do it. There are a bunch of clips of John gushing over Taylor back when they were dating, but once they broke up, everything went sour. Taylor Swift's latest post-breakup song, We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together, ruling the charts, Swift has now found herself in a mini battle over another of her post-breakup anthems. Showbiz Tonight can tell you Taylor Swift's taking an ex-boyfriend, John Mayer, to task for daring to think that Taylor's song, Dear John, is about him. Dear John is clearly about John Mayer. I mean, let's go ahead and look at some of the lyrics. Taylor writes, My mother accused me of losing my mind, but I swore I was fine. You paint me a blue sky, and I go back and turn it to rain, and I lived in your chess game, playing games with her, but you change the rules every day, which sounds about right because he's definitely got a double standard when it comes to these relationships. Then she goes on to address the age gap, saying, don't you think I was too young to be messed with which um yeah he's 32 what does he want with 18 year old like why like, it's, she's pretty much like a teenager well she is a teenager still like why would why would he want to be with her so once this song came out of course John Mayer had a lot to say about Taylor to a recent interview from John Mayer where he slams Taylor for her song dear John which was released shortly after their 2010 romance ended it features some pretty biting lyrics. I think it's safe to say that John Mayer is not a fan of Dear John. He told Rolling Stone in 2012, I never got an email. I never got a phone call. I was really caught off guard, and it really humiliated me at the time when I had already been dressed down. So I think at this point, John was kind of going through it. So the Dear John song, again, did not help his reputation. And John Mayer's response this summer was just as biting. He told Rolling Stone, I was really caught off guard by the song and that it humiliated him. And he took a shot at Swift, calling her song cheap songwriting and a really lousy thing for her to do. 
John didn't stop there. He went even further. He said that he takes issue with Dear John as a musician. Quote, I will say as a songwriter that I think it's kind of cheap songwriting. I know she's the biggest thing in the world, and I'm not trying to sink anybody's ship, but I think it's abusing your talent to rub your hands together and go, wait till he gets a load of this. That's BS. So, um, okay, John, I feel like if I feel like he's probably done something similar before. I mean, who really knows? But that just seems like a like a stupid response. Like, really? I feel like music is like a way to express like you and what you've gone through and something very personal. But he's telling her to avoid that and to what? Like manufacture a song that isn't about her life experience. The interesting part about his criticism is that he doesn't criticize any of her lyrics specifically on what she's writing about him she he's just like criticizing the fact that she wrote a song about him in general so why don't you break down the lies or the inaccuracies well probably because it's all true one reporter asked him about the lyric that reads don't you think i was too young to be messed with and john said quote i don't want to go into that so hmm, nice you get to pick and choose what we discuss here so now we know that john overshares about his relationships but doesn't like when his ex-partners do this same thing. John has talked about several of his ex-girlfriends in interviews over and over again. He has no problem sharing intimate or unflattering details about his relationship. Once upon a time, John Mayer dated Jennifer Aniston, and the way that they broke up wasn't pretty. There has been a rumor going around that Jennifer dumped John because of his excessive tweeting, but he denied that in his response while also sending some shade in her direction. So John said that he broke up with Jennifer because she was too old. Imagine saying that Jennifer Aniston is too old. He was quoted saying, in some ways, I wish I could be with Jennifer, but I can't change the fact that I need to be 32. Wait, wait, I'm trying to like understand this timeline because 2010, like, did he date Jennifer and then Jessica, I guess at the same time, but then Taylor Swift was around the same time as well. Hmm. Anyways, he says that he can't change the fact that I need to be 32. The brunt of her success came before TMZ and Twitter. I think she's still hoping it goes back to 1998. She saw my involvement in technology as a courting distraction. Hmm. Well, uh... I thought he denied the Twitter thing, so I don't know why he's like confirming the technology part here in this statement, but um, I don't really think this is a valid excuse. And also, like, 32 is like not that young, <laughs> like, grow up. To TMZ about his breakup with on again, off again girlfriend Jennifer Aniston got him named one of Showbiz Tonight's most toxic bachelors. He has diarrhea of the mouth, he gives out way too much information. There's no filter on this guy. Mayer mentions his romance with Aniston in today's new Playboy interview, but in a much sweeter way than he talked about Simpson. It's unfortunate what happened between John and Jennifer, because he really didn't need to do that. I mean, unless the Twitter comment really upset him, like really, really hurt him, it was so unnecessary to see him go and confront the paparazzi to tell them how he really feels about Jennifer. I mean, <laughs> couldn't he have uh, tweeted it? Right that Jennifer Aniston is the smartest, most sophisticated person I think I've ever met. And people are different. People have different chemistry. They have different lives. It's not about years. It's about going out with somebody, being truthful on the way in, being truthful in the middle, and being truthful on the way out. You're either a cheater or you break up. And I'm not the first. I'm the second one. Similar to John's other rules, he has another rule that he expects his partner to keep their relationship private unless he decides to make it public. Back in 2009, 2010, John was a messy man. And at some point he was messing around with Vanderpump Rules star Sheena Marie, who <laughs> you guys may have seen that there's been a lot of um, Vanderpump Rules drama in the media lately, which if you guys want me to talk about that, let me know in the comments below but at some point she exposed her relationship with John which is really bizarre oh, it sounds like we're sisters but we're not but we're gonna talk like sisters right now because she is giving me the exclusive with John Mayer now so many people right now are wondering what is a real story and we've been hearing rumors like you're dating you're his girlfriend you guys just hang out we want to hear it from you 
I'm surprised that Sheena was so open about speaking about their relationship. It kind of does give me clout chaser vibes, but I also believe everything that she's saying. His birthday party there last year, I happened to be the lucky girl that got to work it. So it wasn't this past April. A lot of people were saying it was just this past month. No, I, I, I mean, I met him previously, but um, when I met him, he was with Jennifer. I walked her to the bathroom. She didn't know where I was. It's kind of like hidden back. And she told me how pretty I was. And she was just like, oh my God, you have such beautiful eyes. It's not like she was so sweet there. They seemed happy. They were cute and cuddly and drank the same kind of drink. So initially, she didn't share that much about John and her relationship. Her comments didn't seem offensive. She gushed, I love his personality. He's funny. He can be like a dork. Her short interaction with the press seemed pretty innocent, but John didn't like the fact that she was talking about him and reportedly hasn't spoken with her since. I mean, we all had some drinks together and he's just, he's a really funny guy. Like he just has an amazing personality. So I know sometimes that can be taken off as like flirtation. So mm, I... I don't know. Okay, so this is a while back now, yeah. and recently, obviously, the reports are saying that you guys are hanging out. Tell me, like, from then on, what happened? This article reports, while at the Catch Boutique launch event in LA this weekend, Sheena, who started seeing John after they met in a Beverly Hills lounge in early April, told a friend that she's, quote, kind of nervous that John hasn't texted or called. So it seems like Sheena spoke to the press and then John became upset, so he ghosted her and acted like their relationship never really happened, which I do want to be clear that she started seeing John after he broke up with Jennifer Aniston, even though they supposedly met while these two were together. We both were going through a breakup at the same time. And so I think when two people kind of have something in common like that, mm -hmm. you know, we were both sad at a certain time. So it was after they were broken up oh, when you guys started talking. Yeah. Okay. yeah, that I want to make clear. No one's right. cheating on anyone. This wasn't like at his birthday, he slipped me his number, or vice versa. This next article I found is so ridiculous. They write, while Sheena was at this launch event, she had her tarot cards read and was horrified when the psychic told her that she should be concerned over her recent choices in love. She assumed the psychic meant about her spilling the beans on John. Even though she did specifically tell reporters, he's not my boyfriend, Sheena is afraid that she spilled too much to the media and may have screwed up something with a grip guy which it sounds pretty desperate that she's going to the media and like you know freaking out over the fact that he ultimately ghosted her like she needs to move on it's kind of embarrassing and it only got worse after she accepted that they were over because then she decided to go to the press and share even more about him and claims at some point that she was in a thruple while with john we on for about six months we hung out and like we would go to his house in calabasas or hidden hills whatever it's called it just became you know kind of the three of us mm -hmm. we had a, a little thruple <laughs> going on wait for... so does that mean like um sexual thruple? yeah uh-huh no way I would actually love to have Sheena on my podcast. If you guys want Sheena on, comment below. Tell her to come on to the podcast because I'm sure she has a lot to share about some of these LA celebrities. But there was someone back in the day who called her out and said that this was all BS. One of John's friends said that the two were no longer in contact and that Sheena had been exaggerating her interactions with him. John's friend was quoted saying, the two are no longer in contact and Sheena has been exaggerating her interactions with him. They said, quote, Sheena's delusional. John's laughed off all of this. Mm. Ouch. So it sounds like they're trying to discredit her, but also I kind of, I don't really see her making this up. Sheena actually says that she was in this thruple with another reality TV star named Stacy Adams, which we haven't heard from Stacy, so we don't know her side of the story. But Sheena claims that this went on for about six months, that they hung out, and it kind of became just three of them. They had their little thruple going on. But Sheena explains that she grew jealous as John started showing Stacy more attention. Well, I was like, wait, I brought you into this and now you're getting more attention than I'm getting. What's up with that? Something about John Mayer rubs me the wrong way, which sucks because I do like John Mayer. I mean, his music's great. You can't take that away from him. I've gone to his concerts before. He's a very dreamy guy. But when you see him on Instagram telling people to 
Google him. It just kind of makes me cringe because he seems like he's very entitled and self-absorbed. And it also seems like he's got a theme or um, a liking to young 18-year-old girls because he didn't just prey on Taylor Swift. He also preyed on Miley Cyrus back when he was 33. So after he dated Taylor Swift in 2011, he decided to kiss on Miley Cyrus backstage at the Grammy Awards. Reports claim that Miley spent the entire weekend with John after the Grammys going to parties and following him around like a puppy dog. John didn't seem to mind the attention either and was spotted touching the singer's neck and face after she grabbed his behind. But since then, Miley has dissed John Mayer. When asked about her new album, she was describing it and claimed that it would not be like Granola. I don't listen to Ed Sheeran or John Mayer. I wonder how many other 18 year old celebrities John has tried getting involved with because um, like I'm like trying to count them down like how many Miley Taylor I mean how many more could there be but there's definitely uh, something up with this guy what do you guys think about John Mayer um, would you still date him that's the real question but here's my email if you guys have any other video ideas for me let's go ahead and open this PO box package item it looks like it's from um, Joella Inc joella inc so let's go ahead and see what they sent me okay so the packaging looks really nice but it has a really interesting smell um it's called oh my gosh is this is this mushrooms mojo a microdose for a modern life <gasps> what is this is this like mushrooms oh my gosh i'm gonna have to check this out i'm kind of scared to open it because it does have a really interesting smell oh it doesn't even smell like the box doesn't smell weird no wow <gasps> are these actually like mushrooms oh my gosh magic mushrooms we reverse engineered a blend of functional mushrooms herbs and roots give you clarity hmm so maybe it's not like functional mushrooms interesting guys wow i mean the packaging looks really nice what is that like ooh. wow start slow hmm Wow, it starts slow. Okay, cute. I like the branding a lot. You would not even know that these are like mushrooms. These look like they're like just sold at Target type. Maybe they will one day. Um, I have tried like mushroom chocolate once in my life, but I wonder like if these are actually, I'll need to like Google it and see if these are, I mean, it's giving mushroom. It's get, very much giving mushroom. And the packaging is really cute. So shoot, looks like I might have to call it a day and go on a hike. No, I'm just kidding. Hey, when you take these things, it's not a hike. It's called a skip. If you're going, you take this stuff and you go on a hike, it's called a skip. But wow, thank you, Mo Mojo. That's really cute. Um, I didn't see a letter in here, but I will go ahead and link you below and let you guys know if I end up trying this. But until next time, I'll see you guys in a new video soon. It looks like it's Mojo Microdose. So go ahead and check them out and I'll see you guys soon. Bye guys.